All right, guys, one, two, three, toy back again, and we are with Brian Zing. Now, these are the reference minis. I got to say, Brian, you brought these last year. I was blown away. I wish you guys could all hear these because it is unbelievable the amount of sound that you get out of these things. In fact, these were by far my favorite speaker played all of last year. I think you played second last year. Yes. It was at the Open Unlimited? The or? Open Unlimited, yes. Open Unlimited. It, it was amazing. I, I was thoroughly impressed. So why don't you tell us a little bit about these because they really are a great project. Thank you, Nick. So yeah, so these are my speakers are reference minis and um, these are my attempts in trying to build as good of a small speaker as possible um, without uh, you know, things like cost limitations or complexity limitations because I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, when I was building these, I was moving very often, like every couple of months I'd be moving. So I needed something that was small. Mm. And uh, therefore I thought it was a very worthwhile investment to actually get something that's small and sounded great. Um, on the speakers here, so what I started was I used the best small, the best small drivers I could possibly get my hands on. Um, like for example, this is, the tweeter is the small version of Scanspeak's uh, top the line beryllium tweeter. Um, it's just it's just small with a smaller faceplate. And uh, mid ranges also scan speaks neodymium mid ranges. And the woofers are from Wavecore, and I picked them because they had like the highest motor strength out of small woofers. So oh wow! I can, you can get so you can get as much bass out of a small speaker as possible, which is super important for me. Oh, it was super important for me too because that was the one thing that was completely impressive. I, I know everyone in the crowd was like, holy cow, that bass is coming from that speaker? It was unreal. <laughs> yeah, these speakers actually, they go down to 31 hertz. Holy, that's impressive. So, so, their F, so their minus 3 dB point is at 31, wow. and then it's completely flat to 35. Um, that's unreal. Now, you have two passive radiators, Is that then that's how you're actually uh, tuning the woofer then? Yes, yeah, the pa there are two passive radiators on the sides, um, and uh, you know, just try to basically cover the speaker with woofers and drivers, and they're tuned to 35 hertz. Now, one of the things that I found really cool about your project, now most people are like, man, how did you fit a crossover in this small box? But you didn't, right? So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you actually run these speakers? Absolutely. Um, with a DSP, and I run the DSP actually on my laptop because the stuff that I want to do, the, the, none of the commercial DSP chips had the functionality that I want or the power. Mm. Um, so the speakers are active, and the and the crossovers are all done digitally um, on my laptop, and they're, they're standard the Linkwitz Riley filters, except it's just done in the IIR form that you do digital filters with. Um, Although there's a bit of FIR on this to linearize the phase, so it's a linear phase speaker. And if I'm not mistaken, you said that there was also, I mean, almost like a dead stop filter on one of the, I think you said that last year. Yeah. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. So the, uh, so the crossovers, they, the, their slopes are really steep. So, it's a, so normal crossovers would be, you know, second order or fourth order. You don't really see much beyond fourth order because sure. you need a ton of parts to actually do it on a passive and crossover. it gets so expensive and it takes up too much space. Yeah. yeah. And these have a 16th order crossover on them. So it actually, <laughs> the slope goes down by 96 dB per wow. octave. And the reason I do that is because I wanted to minimize the uh, overlap mm -hmm. um, of the crossover because um, it's the overlap that causes the off-axis interferences. And if you minimize that area, then you can also minimize the problems that you have in the off-axis and therefore make things sound better. So am I correct to say that you're a big fan of DSP then? Uh, you are very much incorrect. I'm incorrect? <laughs> no, no, de definitely. Oh, I was like, oh, man, I am. Okay. He surprised me. I was like, all right, well, that's surprising. Yeah, I, I love these speakers. So thanks so much for taking some time with me, Brian. Good luck in the competition. I hope you take the gold this time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you.